Welcome back everybody to a brand new episode of Pine Outdoors. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel to check it out. Remember links to my store, Instagram, and Facebook can be found in the description box below. Today what I want to share with you guys is how you can start making your own crappie spoons on a cheap. Making crappie spoons is a pretty labor intensive task. You're going to need a couple things to get started. You don't have to break the bank, but you got to remember it's going to take a little bit of money to get going, but once you have the stuff to do it, you're set. Me personally, you know me, I always go up here to the Home Depot. I'll probably spend more than I ought to, but it's the ease of access. You're gonna pay for convenience. I will put a list in the description box below um, where I can source some materials for you guys on Amazon. Uh, so that way I can kind of help you guys out. That way it didn't cost you quite as much as it did me. Uh, but you're gonna need a soldering iron. I got the cheapest one that they had up there for like 20 bucks, 25, something like that at Home Depot. So this is what I'm gonna be using. You don't really need all these attachments. I've just got a little fine point attachment that I put in here. So you're gonna need that. Best solder for this application is gonna be this 6040 rosin core solder. At least what I found. Uh, this roll right here was like $25 I think. So it is gonna be one of the more expensive items on your list. You're also gonna need some size one willow blades. You can get them from designers.com. I think this bag of 100 right here was like $4.19. Uh, pretty inexpensive part of it, but you need to account for your shipping too. You're also gonna need you some hooks. These are number six sickle hooks. Uh, you can source these from Amazon. You can get them from designers. Um, I think for this box of a thousand of number six, I made it might've paid like maybe 30, $35, something like that. Um, if you use a number four and you prefer that, I also like to use those too. Uh, if you get those, those are a little bit more expensive on those sites. Uh, you, you, you can expect somewhere in the range between 30 and $50. Uh, just be smart where you source them from. Another thing too, is this is gonna require a whole nother step just for ease of access because I use this for making lead head jigs, but I also use these for making the spoons. Um, so in my case, I don't want to have a bunch of different stuff laying around and it doesn't take but just a minute to clip the heads off. And I really like the sickle hooks too. If you prefer like a light wire Aberdeen J hook or something, you can source those, but I think they're a little bit more expensive generally. Also an inexpensive set of forceps is great for holding the hook onto the blade. And last but not least, you're going to want you some type of this Protec powder. Whichever route you go, whatever you normally put on your jig heads, just use that, it'll work. All right, go ahead and start by plugging in your solder iron. Remember this thing gets pretty hot, so take safety precautions. Uh, just for sake of eye candy in the video, I've put all the stuff up here in the background. Um, so I'm just gonna use this little piece. I normally don't ever clip it off. This makes a nice grip hold for the solder. Uh, but like I said, just for the eye candy, this is what I'm gonna be doing. Something I forgot to mention in the beginning was that you're gonna need some type of wire snip, some type of pliers here. And what I do is I go to the very top right here where this turns to a 90 and I take my clippers and I just clip it. And that's the extra step that I was talking about. If you're really trying to produce a whole bunch of these, it's gonna be more ideal to, to eliminate that for sake of brevity when you're making them. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your ruler blade, leave the hole on this side here. I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you do it the other way around, but just cover this hole up because that's where we're gonna put our line whenever we get done that's what we're going to hook to put it just like this and then you're going to take your hook and grip it with your thumb right there so you can hold it all in one hand right now what you need to do is you need to take your forceps in your other hand and i get it up here as close to the edge as possible and i just clip it just like that right there so it's going to hold us steady so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this hook up to where it's sitting nice how we like it you notice this blade is kind of tilted downhill right here so i'll go ahead and put my soldering iron on there and i know it's going to be hard for you to see but i heat it up just a little bit and i go ahead and start daubing this on there welding it in okay and then i hold it and i let some of that rosin kind of bubble up and get out of there then I kind of apply a little bit of downward pressure. This hand right now, I'm applying downward pressure so that way that hook is staying sat flat against that blade. We'll go ahead and let it cool for a second. Still a little bit runny. And I'll do one more, do a little prettier on this one. 
the way I have the camera sitting right now, it is hard for me to get on top of it and weld it good. Uh, but off camera, this is what I've done here. If you do it just right, most of that rosin stuff will come out of this end and you can see the wet spot right here on the box. Um, and you have a little bit here and sometimes that messes with the paint a little bit. I guess if you want, we're gonna be extra anal about it and you want it to be super clean, you could always just drop this into some like lacquer thinner or something. After it's cool, don't explode yourself uh, and clean some of that rosin stuff off of there. Uh, but for my purposes and what I do, this is good enough. Um, another thing is, is you don't want to weld too far up here towards this hole because what happens is, is when you hang these in the oven and you turn them upside down, that lead will kind of have a tendency to drip and then you'll wind up having to uh, drill these out. The best way to drill them out is not to use a drill bit. You'll chip your paint and all that stuff. But if you have a little Dremel with a tiny little attachment, you can kind of guess where this hole is and you can bore right through there and it makes it super clean, super nice. So it's not the end of the world, don't worry. Now that we've got our spoon welded here, we can go ahead and take our blade off. Now that we've got it welded, go ahead and clamp it just like this so it makes creates a 90. You can go ahead and take your, take your powder of your choice, whatever you're gonna do. If you've got a fluid bed, use that. If not, don't worry about it. Just give it a little slosh like that. Keep it nice and fluffy. Go ahead and start your torch up. Give it a quick little heat. You don't need a whole lot of heat to do this. You don't want to break your weld, and that's about enough there. And reach down in there and give a little daub. Now you've got yourself a beautifully welded, beautifully painted uh, crappie spoon. Uh, doesn't get much better than that. I really like these. They work really well. The only other thing that you're going to have to do now is follow these instructions and it says for maximum durability hang and bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for 20 minutes um, always pop out the eyes before curing because once it cures like i said it's real hard but again you can use the dremel and you can get out of a pretty big mess that way so there you go and that's how you can do it with your sweat equity and you don't got to spend a bunch of money on them pretty much regardless of where you go these spoons get pretty pricey um, so you can do it yourself or if you don't want to do it yourself at the time of this recording I have them on my website they have a different hook on them they're a J hook you can get them for $1.99 a piece at pineoutdoors.store thank you guys so much for tuning in I'll catch you on the next one